And for, I, I want to tell you, after that visitation, Wesley, I could hear the Spirit speak. Now, I, I want to say something to all of you out there. There's one thing for Father to speak to you. There's another thing for you to understand how Jesus speaks. Just go through the Word of God and outline how Jesus speaks so you get to know how He speaks, how God speaks, and get to know all of His different facets, uh, Elohim and Jehovah and how He expresses Himself. There's another thing for you to learn how the Spirit speaks. That's what brings you into a place of walking in the reality of where you are, and all of a sudden the person the third person of the Trinity is speaking to you and in communion with you and keeping you connected through the Son it, with the Father. It's, it's an amazing dynamic. And I go back to that point in the hospital. That was the changing moment of my life. Wow. So, and I have never looked back. So the Lord says, I want you to marry that girl. And she was mad at you that night because you, where you were going to take her. Well, I took her home. I took her back to the dorm. I did what she asked me to do. <laughs> but I tell you what, I knew she was my wife and we've been married for 48 years now. So I obeyed years. the Lord. 48. I, we look, she looks better than me, but we still look good. What was the next date like? Um, did you apologize? Uh, the next date, it, we met at church together. And uh, then the next date, we played cards. You know, I grew up in a family that knew how to play cards. I started playing cards when I was five. <laughs> and, and again, she would just always accuse me of being, anytime I would drift back over into the old life, she would say something to me about. And I saw how Holy Spirit put her in my life to use her so drastically, even in the business world. I, I left being in pre-med and, and graduated from Texas A&M in, in uh, an area called uh, operations management. And then I graduated in cognitive systems. And uh, it, I always saw how when I would drift to be in the world and start getting of the world, she had some way to speak. So how, how many? How long after that uh, first date did you got? Did you two marry? We got married. The, our first date was on November the eleventh, uh, nineteen seventy two. We got married uh, after that the very next year. Wow! And then when did you have your first child? We didn't have our first child till 10 years after we got okay. married. So, uh, and, and the first child we had, uh, she couldn't have children, she found out. And the first child we had, uh, one of the, by this time I was in ministry and uh, uh, one of the pastor's relatives got pregnant and we knew it was our child. And so that we adopted our first child. Hmm. And uh, then after that, we went to a James Robinson conference. You know, yep. uh, John Wimber and James Robinson. Yep. Uh, John Wimber was moving in a lot of the things of the spirit. I never was a very good Baptist, so I would always see what was going on in the spirit world. And we went and... In the midst of that conference, he started ministering to pregnant women. Well, I thought, oh, well, here we go. You know, Pam can't get pregnant. And all of a sudden, I looked over there. She was standing up with both of her hands. She was bright red while he's ministering to these pregnant women. All of a sudden, I said, what's happening? She said, the Lord is healing me. The Spirit of God is healing me right now. She said it was like hot oil went down through her body and the clots in her uterus got knocked out by the power of God right there. Wow. Right in that moment. And she got pregnant two weeks later and we have, she stayed pregnant for 10 years. Sort of like <laughs> you. And so, so you had five more children. Yeah. Wow. And, wow. Uh, plus we had twins that uh, didn't make it. So. Uh, it's been it's been quite a journey for us, but I, I want to say to you, let 
when the Spirit of God draws you, follow Him. Uh, any of you listening out there, it, you might be hearing this, wanting to know how salvation works. He'll draw you. He'll draw you. And He draws us to Him. And you will come to know Him. Then there's going to come a moment where Holy Spirit becomes so real to you that you're going to know him. And I want to say what God is doing in the church right now by the Spirit is gathering, starting, getting us ready to gather the harvest in. And so you'll start seeing with eyes of the Spirit people that the Lord is calling, and you'll be used as a witness for them. That's amazing. So, just just as you were saying that, I was kind of summarizing it and the summarization that I kind of have heard from your testimony of conversion is that how important people, God used other people yeah. in the salvation of Chuck Pierce, the Absolutely. sanctification of Chuck Pierce, the growth in your whole life. God used individuals like you, your, your you mother, heard, your grandmother. You learned to hear God through his work. <clears throat> Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But you have to learn how he speaks through people, too. And you have to learn how he puts people in your life and authority structures in your life. No greater faith have I seen the man who understood authority. I've always honored authority. I've always uh, noticed the authority. Just like I noticed when he took my dad out of my life, I always noticed the authority that he put in my life, now, whether they were godly or ungodly. And I learned to hear God through all of those authorities, structures. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you get to know the Spirit. You come into communion with ho through Holy Spirit. And the Word of God says this in Hebrews 9. This is a defining scripture in my life. Uh, by his spirit flowing through your blood, he cleanses your conscience. Wow. And see, his spirit actually is what's flowing through your blood. When your heart pumps, Holy Spirit's moving through your body. And that window between heart and soul, conscience, he's, he's keeping it clean so you have vision. Wow. It becomes so important to understand and you're seeing how the Lord's moving in your life. I think a lot of people, they get saved, but they can't ever see how God's moving in their life. And if I had one prayer to end this today, my prayer is that you will see God. Hmm. And you will see how he's moving by the Spirit all around you and through you and through your life. And you'll do what is necessary. See, we all have our conscience is an authority in our life. And that's why you can't have rules always in regulation. Uh, uh, some things might not bother your conscience. I can't watch the same movies one of my wife or kids watches because it would bother me. I can go to places, perhaps, and I've had to because I've traveled all over the world. It doesn't bother my conscience to be in certain places. Your conscience has to stay in constant communion with the Spirit of God so that you see God where, no matter where you are. You can stand in the midst of evil and see what God's doing. And I want to tell you, if I have one prayer for, uh, for you, it's that you will see God in your mm. midst. Wow. Well, why don't you just pray that right now over the listeners? And Some obviously. What a blessing. Yeah. What a blessing being with you guys. And uh, I, I do hope you have godly grandmothers and godly wives and uh, godly friends that say to you what you need to hear. And I hope you stay in the word of God. I know Wesley and Stacy have been a proponent of the word of God. I can't live without communing through the word of God because it is alive and wow. it is him and it, it comes alive by his spirit. So father, right now I ask you everyone listening and father, I have a, I have a desire that they know your spirit, that the supernatural power of your spirit 
operate through them in a whole new way, and they see you moving all around them in Jesus' name.